Welcome to EOS in Sweden to Yachting Monthly's test of the Halberg Rassi 412. Up at the bow we've got a um, massive delta there, we've also got the prodder built in to port. Recessed furler, that's electric, more on that later. Um, windless, also electric. Uh, here's the anchor locker, you've got a hose there for cleaning the muddy anchor when it comes up. Um, the chain locker is actually down there which creates a separate space above it which is used for fenders and mooring lines and that sort of thing on this boat at least. Okay, coming back, you've got two hatches here. This one's above uh, the forward cabin. That one's the ensuite for the forward cabin. It's kind of, because it's a head, it's got a kind of milky colouring to it. So we have the black and white thing on the front um, forward coach roof, which I'm not sure quite works. Good spread stays here, so that's just an easy walk through, no swinging anywhere. Got this fat fell system, which is the first time that's been seen, um, which essentially is an in-mast furling system with a roach. It's got a decent roach to it, so you don't lose the sail area. That's all good. Solar panel on there. Um, not the first time, apparently. There was one in the 80s, apparently, a 31-footer. Uh, but it's the first time the traveller hasn't been in the cockpit. So it's forward of the windscreen here, out of the way of the family, and you know, just keeps the cockpit clear and safe. Good handrails running the length of the coach roof and also here to get in and out of the, uh, the cockpit. Fabulous, gorgeous length of wood that uh, we associate with Homer Grass. So we've also got the 12 volt chargers over here, which is very good for phones and uh, iPods and so on. All the lines come back to these banks of clutches, one each side. So you've got big sheet bins here to look after all the lines, make sure the cockpit stays tidy. Here's a Lumar Revo winch, electric. And this one, this is a system that Lumar pioneered with Bavaria, which is kind of a, a tacking system. So if you go along on starboard tack, you want to tack over onto port, you hit this button here, which is port out, this one, and starboard in. This one will release, that one will tack in, uh, and you tack the boat. So you have a one-fingered tacking system. We've got tons of storage. We've got the cockpit locker, uh, which is down this deep, sole depth, uh, which goes back that far. Same on the other side. You've got another one here, again, both sides. And there's a little cubby there for the, the backstay line, 48 to 1 backstay. Um, here, this lifts, that pulls out, and that's your walk through to the bathing platform. And the gas locker is also down there, big gas locker, double gas locker. Um, and this is kind of the bridge, as it were. There's not much that doesn't happen from here. You've got your big 14-inch Furuno Time Zero plotter, another one over there. So you've got your horn there. That's the electric furling for the Genoa, in and out. Anchor up and down, if you can't be bothered to make the walk up forward. Uh, here are the thrusters for the forward and the stern thruster, the bow and the stern thruster. Got your autopilot there. Uh, you've got your stereo controls there. Um, port in, starboard out, so it mimics the, uh, the one finger tacking thing either side. You've got that there as well. As well as all out. If you want to furl and sail, all out. Press furl in, gets rid of the jib. Emergency bilge pump there. These power the secondaries, so you can only, quite inconvenient, you can only, uh, only wind in on those, you can't release. And there's your electronic throttle engine controls down here. That is the bridge, some light controls there, so you can turn your nav lights, the steaming light, deck light, compass light, all done from here. It's a one finger boat, is what it is. Okay, come down below, nice hand holes there, grab on there, and there's plenty here as well. Uh, going through the aft cabins, it's the first time there's been a Harbour Grassi with two aft cabins, Harbour Grassi of this size. Um, it's very bright, it's got the whole ports there, it's got uh, two opening ports there. So there's plenty of light, uh, which you'd need with all this dark cladding. It needs the light uh, and it gets it. 
massive berth, huge. Um, this, I'd probably prefer to see a double door here, rather than just one single that you kind of have to reach around to get your, get your thing. So a double door there would have made me slightly happier, but um, invisible hinges, which they've just, this is the first one that's featuring those, and it's got the built-in ventilation. There's um, a hatch aft to get through to the calorifier and to the, the gubbins on the rudder stock. That's where you get at your generator if you had one. Below here, you've got the fuel tanks and some batteries for the thruster. Over the other side, you've got more or less the same, only it's slightly smaller because of the heads. It takes up a little bit of the space there. So this is a three cabins, two heads version here. There is, a, I think the one I'd probably go for is the two cabin, one head. So you end up with the bigger heads here and a massive cockpit storage space here. Anyway, this is the aft head, smaller of the two. Got electric loo there, rear controls, the holding tanks in here, the storage there, storage below, a hand shower here. It's just a bit tricky to, to get to, you know, if you're brushing your teeth and stuff there. Um, anyway. Apart from that, absolutely fine. Good ventilation, good light, happy days. Here's the chart table. Um, it's a good size, got a nice handhold here. Little gas strut there. It almost keeps it open, there it is. Uh, stereo here, some amazingly neat wiring, which everything is wired and uh, very carefully labelled in there. Always encouraging. Uh, got a space here, which is where you put your almanacs and so on. Uh, some power switches, some light switches, got more stowage down here, there's more under the seat. Here on the galley, uh, they're all the same on all four versions, very safe, you get your U-shape in here, it's all good. And the, uh, the woodwork is lovely, they use the same piece of wood for all these drawers, so the grain is matched on all of them. Uh, tons of stowage, good gimbal on the grill, you're up and over cover there. The fridge runs this, um, the box system, so everything moves around fairly neatly. Uh, got storage out here, including custom storage for your crystal glasses, your crystal Harburg Rassi Swedish crystal glasses. Um, it's all pegboarded like this. Um, I'm not sure, I think these are, I just want to make sure if I open this to see that I wouldn't end up with all that coming out, so maybe a fiddle might be nice. Well, you do have one there. There is one there. More storage down here, complete the chopping board. Uh, Water tank switch is here, which is quite handy, neatly labelled to choose between the starboard or port tanks, which are under the saloon seating. And then lastly, another one of the options is this freezer here. Cool. Well, the big difference on one of these for a Harbour Grass is that you've got these windows here. They used to have, uh, I asked Magnus if this was the first boat he'd done it on, and he said no. Uh, the boats they used to make had only whole windows, there was no coach roof at all. Um, so that's great, that's really good, and they're at the right height to look at. I've uh, got some very spangly LED strip lighting here. So bright, all, all of these open, and they're huge as well, massive, massive hatches. There must be limits to the size you can have, and that's got to be approaching it, because it's so bright in here, uh, and the ventilation is incredible. The water tanks are under here. These lift to create massive, massive double berths. Um, tons of space there. Sorry, massive single berths. <laughs> um, and as I said, it's loaded with extras, one of which is a TV, which pops up over there. There's a double leaf table here. Uh, there's not really much storage, there's about six inches of storage under this one between the water tank and the bottom of the seating. This one is just water tank. Got a hatch, uh, a locker there, locker there. As I say, there's some storage on sort of shelves behind the seat backs. Domestic batteries are all under here. And there's a wine locker under here, which we can uh, just take a quick peek at. Make sure no one's stolen off with a Newton Rothschild. No, there it is. So storage is a bit of a premium in the saloon, but um, there's masses of it in all of the cabins. Here's the forward heads, the owner's en suite. Uh, again, very bright, it's got that sort of milky hatch which I wasn't sure about from the outside. Um, it's also got this separate shower cubicle, so it's got the full stand-up shower. 
there's your screen which folds neatly away over here there's the shower itself lots of storage in here there's lots of storage under there that's full width there's your electric loo controls again more space in there the holding tanks are there some storage here but the big story i suppose is an extra again this isn't standard washing machine So the forward cabin here, I keep banging my head on that, which is, uh, I know it kind of has to be there, but um, a bit of padding wouldn't go on this. So there's two lockers here. That one's a hanging locker. This is also a hanging locker. Another one down there. This is a shelved locker. There's masses of storage on this boat. This entire space under here is essentially a sail bin at the moment, uh, but that could be used for storage. The transducers are down there, as well as the loo inlet valve. Um, shelves either side, there's lockers at the foot of the berth um, and beneath the forward section of the berth is the bow thruster. So the Havergrass 4 and 2, how does she sail? We've been really lucky with the weather. Um, beating, I've got 7.7 .7 knots, 7.6 into average wind speeds of 20 and 22 um, at around 28 to 30 apparent wind angle which is very close and given the wind speeds pretty fast too uh, she felt amazing at the helm it's got a very deep rudder didn't lose grip once and we had a right over had the rail under uh, this morning in much lighter wind so we had broad reaching with white sails although they're, they're not white they're uh, apex apex laminates um, Broad reaching at about 120 apparent, with 7 knots of apparent wind speed. We got about 4.5 knots just ghosting along very gently. Uh, then we put the Code Zero up, which is like a kind of cross between a Jenica and a Genoa. It's uh, loose luft, it's on a furler, but it's sort of Genoa shaped, a very big Genoa. Stuck that up and uh, beam reaching with 12 knots apparent wind speed, so pretty much 12 knots true. We were getting 7.1 knots. Uh, heated it up to about 60 apparent in 15 apparent wind speed and we've got 7.5 knots. It's a very able sail and this is a very fast boat. I mean it's, it's a heavy boat but it's very powerful. There's a lot up top uh, and she moves. She's, she's great fun to sail for all the, you know, the push button aspect to it. There's, uh, there's a hands-on feel about it which I wasn't really expecting. Um, this is a boat anyone could sail. As I say, it's push button, everything, your biggest worry would be boredom, possibly. Because <laughs> there's nothing to play with, there's nothing to do, it's everything is push button. I did at one stage run out of hands slightly when I was trying to furl and release at the same time as steering. So it's not entirely a one-man process. Um, but with all these extras on, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's a big, powerful boat, it's a fast boat, and you can literally say it with one finger, quite remarkable.